Hi, my name is Kelly Skorka and I'm an occupational therapist and PhD candidate at the University of Queensland. Together with my co-authors, Associate Professor Jody Copley, Dr. Catherine McBride, Professor Pamela Meredith and Dr. Natasha Reed, we conducted a study investigating the lived experiences of adolescents with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. This study has recently been published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, and I'll be providing an overview of our results and the clinical implications. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, or FASD, is a neurodevelopmental condition associated with prenatal alcohol exposure. FASD is a complex condition and exposure to alcohol prenatally results in children experiencing primary impairments in neurodevelopmental domains. As children with FASD then progress through adolescence and into adulthood, they may also experience secondary challenges that impact on independence and participation in daily activities. Considerable research has looked at the challenges that children and adolescents with FASD may have, their caregivers' experiences and evidence-based interventions. However, there are a number of gaps when considering the ways in which professionals support families. One gap is the limited understanding of the lived experiences of adolescents with FASD. Children and adolescents experience their daily lives differently to their caregivers, therefore it's valuable for professionals to understand their personal perspectives. Additionally, the current literature is quite deficits focused. It is important for us to understand the impairments that children and adolescents with FASD may experience. However, it's just as important to balance this with a comprehensive knowledge of their strengths. Strengths-based interventions are known to be effective in improving outcomes for individuals. Therefore, lack of consideration of strengths is another gap in the research. The aim of our study was therefore to gain insight into the lived experiences of adolescents with FASD, both the challenges impacting and the strengths facilitating their participation in activities. As we wanted to gain deep insights into adolescents' experiences, we recruited a small sample size of four adolescents aged 13 to 15 years old. Data collection involved conducting semi-structured in-depth interviews using a photo elicitation approach. Photo elicitation in this study involved adolescents taking photographs of their daily activities and environments for two weeks and then choosing photos that they wanted to bring to the interview. The photos were used to support adolescents' reflection and discussion during the interviews. Interpretative phenomenological analysis was used to analyse the interview transcripts. This involved first analysing each interview individually to develop a set of themes and subthemes, then conducting a cross-case analysis on all interviews. The results from the interviews highlighted two main themes. The first theme related to anxiety being a significant barrier to adolescents' participation in activities, and they would sometimes avoid activities or environments when feeling too overwhelmed or stressed. However, three sub-themes were also identified relating to the personal assets and external resources that supported adolescents' daily functioning. Adolescents' talents and interests often supported their motivation and helped them to overcome their anxiety. While positive social supports, particularly caregivers and friends, and external resources such as structure, routines, and predictability, helped adolescents to participate in activities. The second theme related to adolescents' desire to be seen as unique individuals, appreciated for their talents and skills rather than being defined by their diagnosis of FASD. So what does this mean for professionals? Well, first, this study has highlighted the substantial impact that anxiety can have on adolescents' participation, and that adolescents with FASD often require their caregivers or other adults to implement external supports and strategies to reduce anxiety and assist them to engage in their activities and environments. When working with children and adolescents with FASD, professionals should be aware of and assess the mental health challenges that they may be experiencing and support families to implement routines and predictability to manage anxiety. The importance of strong positive relationships with others was noted to be helpful in assisting adolescents to attend and participate in their activities. Therefore, developing relationships and social supports may be another beneficial focus of intervention for children and adolescents with FASD. Two other main findings from this study were the value of tapping into adolescent strengths and recognizing their desire to be seen as unique individuals. Adding weight to the current evidence on strengths-based interventions, this study highlighted that the personal assets and external resources possessed by adolescents with FASD facilitated their participation in activities. Professionals are therefore encouraged to identify the strengths of children and adolescents with FASD, consider using strengths-based approaches to intervention, and assist families to incorporate talents and interests into their day-to-day -day activities. Finally, professionals can focus on supporting adolescents to develop a positive, unique self-identity. 
In conclusion, this study has added to the current literature on the challenges that children and adolescents with FASD may experience, while also illuminating the importance of understanding children and adolescents as a whole by recognising and using their strengths to assist with managing challenges. Our research has also promoted the benefits of positive relationships in facilitating adolescents' participation and the need to recognise and appreciate adolescents' unique abilities and personalities. Thank you.